hi there. Um, I'm sitting down kind of low and I have it on widescreen just because of that little rainbow that keeps running around back there. That's from one of the prisms that's dangling uh, from the overhang on the porch. Okay, in looking through all of the journals, I've got at least half a dozen ready to record. Most of them, the energy is too high and joyful. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to give you that dissonance of being somewhat emotionally in the dumps and, and, and trying to share that with you. That's not honest. So I found one that I think is really good that I'll share with you. Um, it's really interesting. You've heard it in some of my videos already, and you'll be hearing more about how I've just had this really uplifting and pleasurable sense of being going on for some time now. Now, I believe in balance. Uh, balance is key, and it, it, it also, I mean, in a secondary way, it helps make sense of the downtimes. Um, when you're dealing with the divine attributes of love, joy, peace, wisdom, all the rest, they don't have anything to balance them. They're whole and complete in themselves. In other words, they have no opposite. But when we're dealing with things like happiness, then there's sadness. Pleasure, then there's pain. So on the 3D level, if you have some kind of an intensity of happiness, uh, you can be thankful when life brings you the equal on the other side of the scales to help bring you into balance. Um, as long as we're not too identified with the avatar that we're operating here with the body-mind, then these things are okay. It's just not a big deal. I'm not this. And so what this goes through is interesting and for the most part enjoyable, but uh, there will be pain. There will be discomfort. And uh, I think it's not until we step fully into our own divine identity that we'll step up, out, and over the whole uh, yin-yang duality thing. And so uh, it looks like I have a time here of a heaviness, and I'm guessing to balance out a lightness. I don't know. Um, I won't apologize for it. I have found the best thing to do is not to run from it, just to be with it. So I'm not trying to cheer myself up. And uh, I will trust what life brings to me and be okay with that. So I think that's enough of a prelude or preamble here. This journal was written 3-9. It was the third one of the day and I'm taking them out of order, but I like the title, Hell on Earth, <laughs> Handling Fear, Running Away into Light. I have uh, Dimitri Halley's link in the scribed uh, document, so just click over. Dimitri Halley is an important voice in the spiritual conversation online. He brings a groundedness that is often lacking elsewhere. In viewing his current video, I'm motivated to share it with you. Let us all see ourselves and at least some of our thoughts in the words that he shares here. And let's learn from him. Be in heart. Know that you are strong and, frankly, divine. That's the best starting point for this and anything that seems dark or challenging. Stay in your strength as you take whatever it is in. The warning goes out against a too beautiful picture of the days ahead. Instead of being balanced, seeing the virtue in that, many, in their fear, have gone over instead to a picture that's just too perfect, too idyllic to be real. Let us stand back from mind enough 
to be able to note how it works, how it handles fear. Often enough, it chooses to run away into fantasy land stuff instead of standing firm and dealing with what is, even welcoming it. What is, is not pretty. We have on earth here basically a form of hell. Or if not quite that bad, then we could call it limbo or purgatory. It is dark and this is taken in as a whole, you know, including the contribution of the powers that were. As I often mention, no matter which way we turn, we find only lies and deceit. I don't care what textbook you open. Even among the people who are sincere and seeking the light, we find that they have been deceived and are sharing the lies that they have believed in. Okay, at least I think we can admit it's a mess. So, what shall we do about that? Do we just turn and run? Climb the Himalayas? Go into our cave? Some, if not many, turn to alcohol and drugs of one kind or another. Remember, caffeine and nicotine are drugs. To erase the dark scenes from their mind. Do we overeat? Or eat junk food? Now, may I point out that this is silly when we go back and take in the daily news again and again. There are some connections that just haven't been made yet between our state and what keeps us there. Process your fear. Sit down and deal with it. No more running away. Get a hold of mine. Don't let it be controlling you. It's time to see that by our running, we just increase the size of the boogeyman when he really isn't that big. Like the Wizard of Oz hidden there behind his screen, all it takes is some clear investigation, some looking. So don't run away. Let's give that up for the duration, shall we? Besides, being divine, we're made of much finer stuff than that. It's only mind that fears. You're not afraid, nor am I. Now, though that sounds great, it won't mean a thing to you until you make it your own by experience. You have to run the fear down for yourself. Defang and declaw it until you finally realize by personal experience that it's just the little guy behind the curtain. And it has been all along. This is where it's important to acknowledge that you've been running away. We all have been to one extent or another. We put pretty faces on things because we want to view them that way. It's nicer. They seem less appalling, less frightening. If they're dressed up in a gown and all made up, you know, easier to look at, huh? Stick to heart and let's take off the pretty outer wrapping in which we've hidden away that which frightens us most. Be in heart. Center there. This is a great time to remember who and what you really are. That you're not your avatar in the play. As you center in heart, it's quite natural to be more detached from this, the grand drama, to look with some extra breathing room, to not be quite so impressed with it, not identify so much. Remember, the atoms are all empty. There is magic afoot. Don't get caught up in the trap of utter belief in the illusion. And that means don't identify with things so much, especially name and form, body and mind. Now, this is part of what will help you to process your fear. This sets you up anyway, not to run from it, 
more importantly, it sets you up to begin to at least see what's behind things and to see where you've been kidding yourself. You've tried to pretend the fear away, just like the Wizard of Oz tried to puff himself up into something so great, and yet full of nothing but hot air he was. And let me tell you, this carries over into your dreams. You can stand down the fear that comes to you in your dreams just as well. To me, seeing is half or more than half of the battle won. Once you see through something, it can never again affect you in quite the same way. You may not have totally disabled or discarded that particular fear, but you've definitely weakened it. Then again, you'll find that many such things will simply melt away like the wicked witch under the weight the flow of your gaze, your ray of attention, focused on them. Just know that you are not powerless. It may seem like you are at times, and that's fine. Take your now as it comes to you, and that's the best way. But always stay centered in now. Most of our fears are invented illusions that have no impact on the now. They exist thoroughly elsewhere in time, whether in the past, as in a memory or regret, or in the future, as in a dread or a fear or a worry. They are simply nothing that's now here. Instead, they are nowhere. Put a little space in your nowhere and you'll get now here. Rather than tackle or embrace any particular fear, let's just look at the overall stance we've been taking, mind has been taking to all of those fears. Let's view our approach to the tough things as we see them in our lives. And as always, let us start with identity. In other words, who are you? Who am I? Always start there. Until you anchor in your real and true identity, you are easy to manipulate. That's because you live largely in mind, which is booby-trapped with all the programming it contains. Mind is no place to stand, face, and conquer your fears. Mind is the fear generator itself. Do you begin to see, to experience that yet? Remember, my words will not save you from having to face things yourself, be in heart, work from your strength. All of us have at least been tempted by the airy-fairy feel-good stuff that's peddled everywhere. It's out there in many guises on the internet telling many different stories, but all hanging together by their underlying nature, which says, let's not look at the scary bad stuff. Let's just look at the pretty happy things. Maybe they're telling the truth and we won't have to deal with that ugly stuff over there. Yeah, right. Earth to you, my friend. You've gone off into a dream. Come back home and wake up. Now, this is tough stuff. Under those shiny, gaudy wrappings, we've hidden away some of the roughest, toughest things in our lives. Things we don't want to deal with in any way. So, earth to you again. You've got to remember this. You are divine. At your core, that is your nature, and that is accessible through your heart. Keep anchoring your awareness in that. Come from strength. Do you know what stands in your way in confronting and dealing with these fears? Chances are good a big chunk of it is your sense of worthlessness. 
That's what I found. It's what we've been fed since childhood and in other lifetimes before. You were innocent or you were sleeping back then, and as children, we obediently took it in. Did you know children until the age of seven walk around in an alpha brainwave state? So they're easily programmed with everything they see. They pick it up, they take it straight in. Keep stepping back from your avatar there, and as you view things from heart perspective, learn to recognize the worthlessness weeds, the poison, pre-programmed, pre-planted for you before you ever grew up in your garden of belief. Now, the thing you're being called on to do here is just to see. That's the biggest challenge of today, to simply wake up your inner vision to regain the flexible perspective that lets you see things from any angle you choose. And let me tell you, just knowing they are there and what to look for is a huge advantage in the play. Add to that the knowing that you're divine and that kings your avatar there. You're in very good shape. Come from strength. Spend more and more time in heart, being heart-centered and less time in the mind. Mind doesn't require your supervision, remember? It functions very well on its own. It's important to recognize that mind and you are separate things. It's time to come right out of believing you are the mind, and thus of having mind in control of you. That way of living is so very over and done, my friend. All it takes is for you to recognize and accept the new heart-centered way. How are you feeling now? You see, we've accomplished some things here, and we haven't yet directly addressed one specific fear. Yet, you're already feeling stronger and standing taller. You're shifting more into heart. Take a picture of how it feels. I won't say that's the end of the challenge here, for it's certainly not. This is more like marshalling your forces to bring them in good shape to the starting point. So, let's be real about things. Let's be willing to see whatever is there, my friends. No more blowing and puffing the fears up until they loom large as the phony image of the Wizard of Oz. Maybe start to look at all of your fears that way. Look closer at them to see where they are hidden behind some mechanism or other so you won't see how very small and puny they really are. All fear is nothing. It's a bugaboo, a mirage. Remember, you're divine. Yet, that won't help you a bit until it is you who is seeing that firsthand. Well, we'll get there together, my friends. Know that Source itself is fully accessible to you in each and every moment, right where you are, 24-7, 365, awake and asleep. Enter heart. Go within. Find your way to the inner kingdom that's there, where you actually reign as higher self. The more time you spend, the firmer will be your conviction about this, until it's such a strong and sure knowing that you'd sooner believe your name to be something else than that you have no access to Source, to God, to the One. Direct access, nothing less. Let that be real for you. You've got to start by simply telling yourself that it's possible. Go from there. Even a toehold like that is enough. You do what you can. Nothing else is required, now or ever. Be at peace with this. Come from your strength. Don't go into battle without knowing who you are. 
as you know, you're not that, not the body, not the mind, etc. That gives you the strength to realize that no matter what's happening to them, you are just fine. You can't be touched. You don't have to have an NDE to experience this. You can't be hurt. This is the real deal. Heck, imagine yourself on the other side, just after crossing over at the body's death. Now, look back on your life here from there. What do you see? What is that perspective like? Be flexible. You are much, much more than you're used to being. And if you're ever not sure about something, take that perspective. Pretend you're on the other side looking back and you did it the A way and then you did it the B way. You'll know from that perspective what's what. Take advantage of the firm knowledge that you are not the body nor the mind. Spend some time watching people tell of their NDEs. I've put together a playlist for you and I'll put a link in the transcript. I find that helps so you won't have to go searching around for them. Getting our identity straight is the very best thing we can be doing. It's time to identify with the fullness of self and stepping up and above the avatar in the game. Time to integrate the fullness of all of our lifetimes here and now. Let's all identify with higher self and then work from there. All of this is to assist us in the shift into heart vision. Keep your perspective ever flexible and not anchored into anything here in 3D. This 3D life experience is very important. Yes, I'm certainly not knocking that. It's your divine assignment, in fact, the one you joyously took on back there before you forgot. But it's not you. Well, let's be remembering that now. It is time. We've got some battles to win. And the biggest and the only real battle is with the self. Don't be fighting anyone else's wars. Don't be forever putting out fires for those around you, for other people. That's not your business, and it just distracts you from your own inner self. As you're doing that, chances are good you're in mind. Check and see if I'm not correct with this. Watch the self. You'll know. Stick with self. Narrow and Focus that perspective of yours. Don't be afraid. Focus the ray of attention only on self and keep it pointed there. Let's have far less focus on the outside. Whether or not you're yet ready to believe that the outside world doesn't in any real or eternal way actually exist, that's not important right now. Keeping attention on self, staying inward focus, that is, stick to self. Save yourself. Leave the other guy alone. He has a higher self too, you know. Let him be about doing things his own way. That's just not your business. I mean, unless someone asks for help or something, don't go volunteering it. So, this is enough. I'll summarize, though. There are very few things said here, but they're important ones. They will stand by you and help you win every time. Now, winning is relative, my friend. You can look like you're losing on the outside, and that can be winning. It depends totally, too, on how you define identity, on who you are, and on who you take yourself to be. As higher self, winning is just being that knowing that Source will handle everything else. It will just all take care of itself. But not until you take care of yourself first. So be in heart. Start there. Stand there and stay there. Watch the mind. 
and detach from it more and more all the time. You'll begin to see how mind is at the root of all the trouble and of all the danger of every problem you face. See too that it's the mind that's doing the suffering. That's not really you. Step back. Begin to recognize more and more that mind and you are not the same thing. Disidentify. Be higher self. Be in heart. Maintain an inward focus at all times. The outer world will intrude into your now where it must. When it does, deal with it appropriately. It won't hurt, though, to begin recognizing that as you. Even the outer world is just you. Thus, the whole thing, the whole 3D gig is you talking with you. That's all it is. It can also be seen as your conversation 24-7, 365 with source. Shift your vision. Now that you have identity straight, you can look at your fears. Look in a general way first and see your overall tendencies to run from the fears. Watch your own personal way of hiding from what is difficult or unpleasant. Rather than just dealing with it, solving it, we all tend to run away and hide one way or another, or coat our fears and uglies over with pretty wrapping paper. Way too pretty to even be real. So, though you may think your fears are there outside of you, my friend, they are not. They're all generated from inside. And as you maintain your inward focus, you'll be able to see this, to see through it more and more. By maintaining contact with heart, presence inside, you'll be there and available when the still small voice has something to say. You're stationed at Intuition Central. So your guidance will be working better than ever before. You can rely on you. Capital Y. Okay, we have only begun to address what Dimitri brings into this video, but this is enough for now. We must first find the right stance. Find the self and anchor in that then we are more than well equipped to take on any dragons, any demons of fear of any kind. This is good work. However, for addressing our generalized way of handling fears in our life, once we recognize that, once we see it, then half of the work is already done. We are well on our road to being danced, to getting to sort of sit back and watch Source and the heavens do battle for us, in a way. One way or another, things get done by themselves. Soon, very soon, we will be no more the doers, but beers instead. The finest stance of them all. Okay, now, when you watch the Dimitri video, uh, it might kind of undercut you. It might make you feel um, a little bad. Just watch that, okay? Watch how you're feeling whenever you're feeling this way or that. You gain more in the watching than you do in anything else, so just watch and be still. Good day.